Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm your host E-Day bringing you some more of my immersive engineering mod spotlight. And today what we're going to be going over is how to make, use, and power the metal press in immersive engineering specifically for Minecraft 1.20. So last time we accomplished the crusher, we added the MV accumulator, so now we can ore double. And we created the external heaters, so now we can smelt those doubled dusts without using coal. So now we are in the phase where we're making machines, because we're done with passive power. All we can do is expand on passive power right now. We are getting into the beginning machines. The first one I like is Crusher, of course, so we can double. The next one... I like is going to be the metal press. And here's a little teaser for the rest of the episode. We're not just going to make one, we're going to make four because there are four different molds for four different items that the metal press can make. Just like last episode, we start with the engineer's manual. It's a book and a lever. And inside the book, if we go to heavy machinery, the very first option is going to be the metal press. This one's really cool. If you hit play, it'll show you how to put it together. If you hit pause, you can push the up and down arrows to see how many levels there are. This one, based off of the book, it is a three by one by three. So three long, one wide, three tall. The way I like to use my metal press, I like to extend it by one on each side. So the question mark shows how much we need for one of these metal presses. One redstone engineering block, one piston, one heavy engineering block, two steel scaffolding, and two conveyor belt. And this, again, is another reason why I went with the crusher first. The crusher does not require the heavy engineering block. The heavy engineering block here requires steel sheet metal, which is steel plates, it requires steel mechanical components, which is even more steel plates, half of them, if you use the engineer's workbench, and electrum ingots, which in a previous episode, I showed you guys, you get the electrum ingots with this alloy kiln here, gold and silver and coal inside the alloy kiln will get you the electrum ingots. So we're going to multiply all of these by four at least. So we need four redstone engineering blocks, four pistons, four heavy engineering blocks, eight steel scaffolding, and we need eight conveyor belts. We haven't made conveyor belts yet either. So for that, we need leather, iron, and redstone. That is not that difficult to make. Let's go ahead and make 16. Let's go ahead and hammer out some of the steel plates. So we need four for the sheet metal, for the steel sheet metal, we need eight for the steel mechanical components. So let's see, is that the correct numbers? We need copper ingots as well. Do I, did I leave any in here? I did not. So let's go inside the engineer's workbench. Four and eight will make us four steel mechanical components. Four of these guys will make us four steel sheet metal. And let's go four heavy engineering blocks. So these are going to be rather simple. We're going to go like this. Two, 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 and two. And then in the center, we're going to have our redstone right here. On top of that, we're going to have our pistons. And what's frustrating is these pistons need to be upside down. So let's see, did they fix this problem? It used to be much simpler. You used to just be able to right click to turn this guy. Yeah, so when you set it down sideways, the hammer lets you rotate it. But I want it to rotate up, which it used to be easier than this. Just shift right click or click the top, right? So let's mine this guy up and let's try this one more time without looking at a block. We're going to look straight up in the air. All right, it has it set to up. Now when we right click, there we go. We put it down. <laughs> All right, so we have the cork lock set to up. By looking up in the sky and pushing K, 
if this doesn't work for you, if this is annoying for you, because this is annoying for me as well, you can uh, shift right click a block on top. So let me do that real quick because this is not a cork mod tutorial. Let me mine all of these guys up again. And what I usually do is I put down my piston, which in this case will go all over the place, right? They're all wrong. It, you used to be able to just right click and turn it vertically. But what I do, if I don't have cork, I go ahead and I keep doing the multi-block. Then I mine up the blocks again. I dig a hole, go down one, and then right click the bottom. <laughs> this is pretty frustrating, but yeah, this is this is the way it works. Because if you don't dig a hole and you right click the bottom, it doesn't count as looking up. So dig a hole, click the bottom. Super frustrating. And of course, fill in all the holes that you made, putting the piston down the way you wanted it. Next up, of course, conveyor belts. And this is the easy part. If you want the conveyor belt to go that way, you face them this way, both of them in that direction. I want them to go this way. So we're going to face them this direction like this, that way, that way, and this way. And now it's as simple as pinging this side. Boom, we have the metal press times four. And that is the basic unit metal press right there. Now it's totally your choice if you want to do the same thing that we did with the immersive engineering crusher how we set an MV accumulator as a battery buffer. We can put four of them on top of these guys, but these guys are so small, I think that would look really gross. So let's just go ahead and hook this guy up the old fashioned way with ports on top, because these are just big enough for the port. And then all of these we can connect to this relay here. I went ahead and I moved it to behind the unit because I didn't want the cables coming from the front. So now we have the cables coming from the back. Next step, of course, we have to make the molds for these guys, which we can do either uh, all four of these molds and then use one machine and constantly be swapping out the mold. Or like I'm doing, I'm making four machines one for each of the molds. And for that, we're going to need the next engineer's blueprint, which is going to be the metal press molds. Iron plate, paper, and blue dye from lapis. So let's go ahead and make this bad boy real quick. There's our metal press molds. And we can switch this paper out. And here are all of our molds. And as you can see, the rod is three steel plates, engineer's wire cutters, Three steel plates, engineer's wire cutters. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put the engineer's wire cutters inside there real quick and make the plates that we need. So let's go ahead and make our 12 plates and drop the plates in here. We need a rod, we need a plate, we need a wire, and we need a gear. These are the most important ones. And then, like I said, you can run just one metal press and then whenever you need something else, you just swap the molds like this. But I like to have each one running differently. So we have plates here. We'll have gears here. We'll have wires here. And we'll have rods over here. Now comes a little bit of a tricky part. It comes down to the actual recipe. The metal press for plates is going to be one ingot makes one plate. So that's no problem to attach the hopper right here on the end of the metal press because the hopper can export one item at a time. So one item gets exported, it goes immediately on the metal press, gets stamped, gets turned into the iron plate. So let's go ahead and put down our treated wood scaffolding here and let's make another one of our wooden storage crates. There we go, wooden storage crate, and we'll plop it down right here because it can export it directly into the wooden storage crate. And let's grab a stack of iron ingots so I can show you. There you go. 
the hopper can export one item at a time, so one ingot at a time, directly onto the metal press. It can stamp it. It goes directly into the wooden storage crate for iron plates. The iron rods are the same way. One iron ingot makes two iron rods, so the hopper can feed one iron ingot at a time. Let's go ahead and set that guy up so you guys can see. And what we'll do is we'll do the treated wood scaffolding across the front. And we'll run conveyor belts like this across. Boom, like that. All right, so here are the iron ingots, and they get stamped into iron rods, one at a time. And of course, I have my magnet on. <laughs> Copper wire, for example, since there's no iron wire, is also the same way. It's one copper ingot makes two copper wires. So let's set that guy up next right here. Boop. And we'll go ahead, since we already have the conveyor belt in the front, let's grab some copper ingots. And there you go. It's stamping one at a time to make the copper wire now for us. Where we run into a problem is, of course, with the gears. Gears require four iron ingots to make one gear. So since the hopper can only let one item out at a time, it will not gather up before dropping it into the metal press. So let me show you the problem that happens. We right click here. We put in our stack of iron ingots. And as you can see, it is not dumping out any ingots because there's no room for it. It will not gather four and then stamp it. It can only let one item out at a time, and because the crafting recipe requires four for this to work, it will not export any iron ingots. This is an issue that we've had with immersive engineering forever now. Luckily for us, the workaround is very simple. We just need to add an extra step. So we'll put down treated wood scaffolding here. We'll add another conveyor belt here, and then we'll attach it to this guy. And now when we put in our stack, it will just drop all of them onto the first one. And then since it gathers up more than four on the next one, it starts stamping them down. The only real problem with this is that it does dump all of them down. So if you have this set to an export where it exports everything, it will drop them all down as entities in your world, which will cause lag. And if the metal press is not fast enough, items can start despawning off of the conveyor belt itself. And of course, you know, you guys know me, symmetry bothers me a lot. So even though the other three work, I still have to make them all the same length. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Conveyor belt, conveyor belt, and conveyor belt. Hopper, hopper, hopper. There we go. Now they're all the same length. And let's make this look good with clinker bricks. And we can extend the slag bricks out one more. There we go. Now we have this cool looking aesthetic of the clinker bricks showing from underneath the treated wood scaffolding and everything is outlined in the slag bricks the way I like it. Yep, that looks nice. Nice and clean. So now of course what we can do is we can set this guy uh, to start stamping our steel plates, which this is the one we're going to need the most of. We can also set it to stamp out even more of our copper wires, since we use that as well, and have them all gather inside of the wooden storage crate here for us for later. And let's check on our MV accumulators. These guys are full, which is really awesome because we are not using that much RF because the only machines that are running right now, the crusher is off. We're running two 
of the metal presses at the same time. And what's great is the metal press, these guys, they only run at 20 or a tick. So these guys could be running nonstop and it will not affect our power since we're running over 600 RF a tick right now with passive power. Thank you so much for joining me today. Smash like to show your appreciation and consider leaving a boom in the comment section below. Also, click on my dude here to subscribe for more Let's Plays. Ooh.